join the Dark Order. Hey there YouTube, Wrestling Optimus here, back with another action figure review. Wednesday night can only mean one thing, AEW Dynamite on TNT. As always, if you're new here, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for lots more pro wrestling and action figure content. But right now, we're headed into Daly's place, so for a review and some fantasy booking, let's take it over to the action figures. Dynamite starts with Jurassic Express already in the ring for their match against FTR. However, the Young Bucks come out and deliver a super kick party to the referee without explanation. They exit through the babyface tunnel, walk up to Tony Khan, throw a wad of cash in his lap and say, you want to fine us? This is similar to what they did on Being the Elite when they threw another wad of cash grenade style into Tony's office. I'm honestly not sure what's going on with this story, but at this point, I trust AEW. As the Bucks go through Gorilla, they pass FTR. Dax jokes, at least you picked the biggest guy in the building, referring to the referee. Cash mockingly asks, are you upset because your little group isn't doing too well? Referring to the crumbling elite. The young Bucks ignore them and walk off. FTR come to the ring with Tully Blanchard and spiffy new matching jackets. If Jurassic Express can win tonight, they'll get a rematch for the titles. Once again, we're treated to a brilliant opening tag match. Early on, FTR work over Jungle Boy, then slow things down and do a little cheating behind the ref's back in order to negate Luchasaurus' power. But, eventually, the dinosaur gets the hot tag and cleans house. He tosses Cash onto Dax, then choke slams him and does a standing moonsault, but Wheeler kicks out at two. Jungle Boy gets a few more near falls after executing a series of counters, but he can't put FTR away either. On the outside, Luchasaurus misses a dive and takes out some of the ringside wrestlers, leaving his partner all alone. Cash and Dax illegally hold on to each other without the ref noticing to pin Jungle Boy and get the win. Aw, I guess that means no title shot for the boy and his dinosaur. Cameras rush backstage to join Alex Marvez. Matt Hardy apparently suffered a leg injury while helping Private Party get ready for their match later against the Inner Circle. Speak of the devil, in walks Jake Hager and Chris Jericho carrying his baseball bat. They mock Matt's injury and insinuate that they were the ones who attacked him. They laugh and saunter off. Kenny Omega is on commentary as Frankie Kazarian of SCU takes on his former tag team partner, Hangman Adam Page. Despite prodding from the rest of commentary, Omega insists that their team is over and moving forward, he's focused solely on his singles career. It's a good, hard-hitting match with tons of big moves. Playing into their tag team experience, both men are visibly exhausted as the match drags on without a partner for relief. In the end, Hangman Page picks up the win with a buckshot lariat. During the picture-in-picture, picture, MJF walks around ringside, trying to force people to kiss his dynamite diamond ring. He's set to take on the captain of AEW Dark, Sean Dean. It's not much of a match as MJF pokes Dean in the eye at the bell and immediately locks on the Salt of the Earth submission for a lightning-fast victory. Wardlow hands MJF a microphone. He says he's an honest man, unlike Dictator John, who had to cheat to retain his title. He should still be undefeated. The crowd disagrees and chants, You're a loser! Max dismisses them and claims to be the undefeated, undisputed, uncrowned world champion. He forces Justin Roberts to announce him as such, which he reluctantly does. Then, it dawns on MJF that the only people who seem to get ahead in AEW are in factions. So, even though he considers himself a bit of a lone wolf, maybe it's about time he joins a wolf pack. NWO reference? Alright, time for some fantasy booking. I think this is the perfect setup for MJF to start the new Four Horsemen. As much as I like their pairing... First, he needs to ditch Wardlow. Thankfully, that's a pay-per-view caliber blow-off right there. Then, team him up with FTR and Tully Blanchard before Tully makes the pitch for Sean Spears. I know most people aren't too high on Spears, especially as a part of this group, but I really like his heel character's attitude and old-school wrestling style under Tully, so I actually think he'd make a great fourth man. Speaking of factions, Eddie Kingston brings his to the ring, although he claims it's really a family. He reiterates that he technically never lost in the Casino Battle Royale. He turns to the Lucha Brothers and says, When this family fights, they don't kiss and make up, they beat people up. 
With that, Butcher and Blade start grabbing wrestlers from the crowd and throwing them into the ring for Pentagon and Phoenix to lay out. Eddie says everyone is good now, except the Blade, who still needs to get his house in order. I presume this is a reference to the Blade's wife, Allie, who is currently kayfabe dating QT Marshall. Looks like the Nightmare family is in for even more trouble. Next, Private Party take on the newly formed team of Chris Jericho and Jake Hager. JR makes a bunch of football references, including reminding us that Hager played defensive tackle in addition to wrestling, and calling Chris Jericho the QB of the inner circle. The heels dominate most of the match, so much so that even when Private Party hit the silly string, Isaiah Cassidy is too beat up to make the pin. Eventually, Mark Quinn gets the hot tag and takes out Hager, but he can't keep Jericho down. When Cassidy tags back in, he misses a senton, then gets hit with the Judas effect so hard he starts convulsing. The inner circle are your winners. After the match, Jericho puts Cassidy in the Lion Tamer. I guess we'll have to wait a little longer to see them get revenge for their mentor, Matt Hardy. In women's action, Thunder Rosa defends her NWA World Women's Championship against Eva Lise, accompanied by her tag team partner, Diamante. AEW women's champ Hikaru Shida is in the audience. They start with an epic slap fight, more akin to a Walter Chop battle than a stereotypical girl fight. We're then treated to arguably match of the night, although it's somewhat ruined by a commercial break and a long announcement on commentary for the special episode of Dynamite tomorrow. Ugh, even when AEW gives us great women's wrestling, they still find a way to screw it up and perpetuate the narrative that they can't book their women. In the end, Thunder Rosa remains your NWA women's champion. Afterwards, Diamante jumps her from behind only for Sheeta of all people to make the save. She picks up the NWA belt and hands it back to Rosa in a show of respect. This sets up a tag team match next week. Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford are spotting Miro in the gym. He's desperate to get back in the ring again, but Kip reminds him that the wedding comes first. Miro apologizes and, as the best man, he promises the best bachelor party ever. Because of current feuds, this fantasy book is completely impossible, but that's why it's a fantasy, so here we go. Private Party hosts the entire shindig at their location where you need an invitation. Hangman Page is getting drunk with FTR at the bar while Chris Jericho hands out a little bit of the bubbly to Jake Hager and Sammy Guevara in the VIP lounge. Santana and Ortiz are hitting on, and getting rejected by, Diamante and Ivalice, and the Dark Order are discussing Kool-Aid in the corner for some reason. All while Orange Cassidy lays down some sick beats from the DJ booth without even trying. Miro gives a hysterical toast which ends with him accidentally covering Kip Sabian in some kind of food. The end. Lance Archer comes barreling out of the tunnel, grabs a random masked jobber from the crowd, and proceeds to murder him in the ring. Then Jake Roberts cuts a promo. He says sometimes in life you find yourself in bed with people you didn't think you'd go to bed with. That's the situation they find themselves in. They need tag team partners for a six-man match, so he reluctantly invites Taz to come out. Taz acknowledges that Ricky Starks, Brian Cage, and Lance Archer would make a deadly trio. So he agrees to form an alliance under the condition that when Archer becomes the new AEW World Champion, Brian Cage gets the first title shot. Jake agrees to the terms. Lance calls Team Taz the enemy of his enemy and says if it comes to him versus Brian Cage, they're going to go Godzilla on Daly's place. I love that line. John Moxley's music plays, and the world champion is standing where he was attacked by that fan at All Out. Possibly as a callback, he's attacked by Ricky Starks and Brian Cage. They also take out a security guard as they beat down Moxley. Big Will Hobbs makes the save with a steel chair and receives a killer endorsement from Mox, who announces that Hobbs is his first partner. Who's the second? None other than Darby Allen. Moxley says next week, they're going to war. For our main event, we go out to the parking lot as best friends take on Proud and Powerful. It's like a much cooler Raw Underground. Santana and Ortiz come out with their faces painted like this kid. I like turtles. Right away, Santana busts his head open on a rearview mirror. Trent pops the hood of a car, throws Ortiz onto the engine, and then repeatedly slams the hood closed on him. Then, both best friends do sentons onto the hood, further crushing Ortiz. Santana finds a baton and nails them both in the gut. Ortiz throws a sledgehammer at Chuck, but misses, smashing a car windshield instead. 
Chuck gets suplexed onto the roof of a car, causing it to collapse. We see trash cans, 2x4s, a giant dustpan, and even a door. Chuck suplexes Ortiz through a steel guardrail. Then, Trent gets double powerbombed through a windshield. At this point, there's blood everywhere because all four men are bleeding from multiple wounds. Chuck finds himself lying against the back of yet another car as Santana lines up his kill shot with a lead pipe. But, Chuck uses the clicker in his hand to pop the trunk. Out jumps freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. He delivers an orange punch to Santana with the added impact of a chain wrapped around his hand. He carries Santana over to a car just so Chuck can pile drive him through the hood. Meanwhile, on top of a pickup, Trent reverses Ortiz and hits the crunchy through some plywood and onto the truck bed for the pin and the victory. All three best friends stumble over to Trent's mom's van where Sue is waiting to pick them up. As she drives away, she sticks her hand out the window and flips off proud and powerful. And, as Michael Sedgwick of WhatCulture.com tweeted, AEW gives the proverbial middle finger to all their critics. What a perfect ending. Another week, another great episode of Dynamite. I don't know how they do it, but in my opinion, AEW never seems to miss. Even after the snake-bitten pay-per-view All Out, they were humble enough to make fun of themselves, which made for great TV last week. As for tonight, we got outstanding wrestling across the board. From the opening tag match, to the singles match between Hangman and Kazarian, and of course, the women's match, or at least what we got to see of it. All were fantastic, but I particularly loved the parking lot brawl. It was one of the best hardcore matches I've ever seen, which is saying something from an old school ECW fan. Even the legend himself, Mick Foley, praised it on Twitter. Overall, the whole two hours absolutely flew by, and I had a blast. My only criticism is that there were no big moments. Although it was a great wrestling show, it wasn't a truly memorable show. Still, it sets up a huge card for next week, including more Thunder Rosa in women's tag team action, Orange Cassidy challenging for the TNT Championship, and that mouth-watering six-man match. I cannot wait. Well, that'll do it for another AEW Dynamite. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments down below. I'll be back on Saturday with an action figure review of SmackDown, so stay tuned for that. As always, if you found me and enjoy my content, make sure to do all that normal YouTube stuff. Smash the like button, share with any wrestling or action figure fans you may know, subscribe to the channel, and help spread the word. You can also talk to me over on Twitter at PSUOptimus, or see all my best figure photography on Instagram at WrestlingOptimus. And if you haven't watched my dark reactions from the garage pool yet this week, you can check that out right here. But until next time, I've been Wrestling Optimus, and I'll catch you later.